Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. In this video, we are gonna go deep on step functions. So you guys and girls were pretty interested seeing a step function. This was a pretty close poll. So I'm just delivering on my promise, even though I'm one week late. We are going to learn why do we need step functions, learn about different step function types. Then we are gonna look at step function service integration, integration patterns, activity tasks, and end the video with some tips and tricks. All right, we have a lot in our plate. Let's get started. So what is step function? Well, you guys and girls probably know this. The usual definition straight from AWS website is AWS Step Functions is a web service that enables you to coordinate the components of distributed applications and microservices using visual workflows. So basically, you can put together a bunch of tasks and create a workflow. But why? Why can't you just code everything in Lambda? By using newly released Lambda destination, you can call another Lambda from one Lambda using asynchronously. Uh, so this is the screenshot for Lambda destination and you can see you can asynchronously call another Lambda. So theoretically, yeah, you can code bunch of Lambdas and invoke each other either synchronously or asynchronously and create a workflow. So what is the problem with that? Well, if you code everything, you also have to code the rollback logic, error and retry, parallel, conditional, sequential processing, and each Lambda has to be aware of the whole flow. So when I talk about rollback logic, error and retry, it's not just rolling back or retrying that particular Lambda. You have to do that for the whole flow. And another problem is, if you code individual Lambdas and something goes wrong, you have to piece different Lambda logs together to get the whole picture. So this is a lot of overhead, it gets out of hand pretty quickly. So step function orchestrate all that out of the box. So step function has built in try catch, retry, rollback. It has branching, parallel executions, timeouts, sequential execution, everything out of the box and it logs each state easier to track. So if one state or one step gives an error, you can look at the whole flow and understand, oh, this happens two steps back and that's what caused this step to fail. But if you code the lambdas yourself and just stitch together the lambdas, it is difficult to find out. And last but not the least, by keeping orchestration out of your code, the less overhead of managing and maintaining code leads to more focus to what matters to you most. Quick brush up on step function components. So step functions lets you coordinate the individual tasks. So this is like a visual workflow. Each step is called a state. And in the state, you can have a task and tasks perform work either by coordinating another service or an application that you can host basically anywhere. So there are two different kinds of step functions. A standard was there from the beginning. Express is relatively newer. The maximum duration for standard is one year. Express runs for five minutes, but the latency is much, much less in Express. So you can see supported execution start rate is over 2000 per second, but Express it's over 100,000 per second. I'm not gonna go over each of those differences. You can look it up. It's actually in the step function console itself. So one obligatory uh, Lambda example with step functions. So you can see the first Lambda is a one state, second Lambda is another state, and both these states have tasks. Uh, so you can see this type is task and resource is this Lambda function, and this resource is another Lambda function. So basically it is gonna call first Lambda and then call second Lambda. Now the interesting part. So Lambda is not the only service that you can invoke from step function. Step function also integrates with bunch of other different AWS services. So what are the advantages? Let's say you want to submit an AWS batch job. So you can write a Lambda and using Boto3, 
you can submit the bad job, you can wait certain number of seconds, and then you can periodically check whether the job is complete or not using another Lambda. If job is complete, then Lambda sends message to SNS. So that's a lot of coding to maintain. So with service integration, step function integrates with AWS batch out of the box. You can submit AWS batch job in one step and the AWS batch can notify step function when done out of the box. You don't have to code any logic and then you can just publish to SNS. So what are the advantages? Less code to maintain, no Lambda, out of the box integration, supports multiple integration patterns. So what is integration patterns? So when we went over the supported service integration, you can see there are three different columns request response, run a job or dot sync, and wait for callback or dot wait for task token. So let's go into each of these and understand. Okay, so let's reuse the AWS batch example. So with request response integration pattern, step function is gonna call the service and gets a response. And then it will go to next state immediately. So note that this HTTP response is just a confirmation that the job has been submitted. It doesn't mean that the job is complete. So in this integration pattern, SNS publish might happen even if job did not complete. Now let's take a look at the next pattern, which is run a job or dot sync. So in this pattern, Step function will wait for the processing to complete before proceeding. So in this case, publish to SNS step will only happen after AWS bad job is finished processing. So why is it called dot sync? Because you are just gonna put a dot sync at the end of resource and it is gonna execute in this fashion. So it's pretty straightforward. So if you don't give this dot sync and keep everything as is, it is gonna run as request response. And if you just add dot sync, it is gonna run in this run a job fashion. Which brings us to the next integration pattern. So this pattern is called wait for callback. So what happens is step function pass a task token to integrated service. Workflow is paused until task token is returned and it can wait up to an year. So let's take an example of a step function where it submits message to SQS. And remember, when you do this step, you have the option to either call this as a request response pattern or a sync pattern or wait for callback pattern. So it is gonna look like this with wait for task token. Again, dot wait for task token. In the resource at the end, just put dot wait for task token. System's gonna generate a task token and attach it to the SQS message. So SQS receives the task token and multiple actions can trigger from SQS, including human approval and some other process, not the SQS itself, responds back to step function. And you can see it's responding back with the task token that was submitted with the SQS message. So that's how step function knows that this step is done, then it is gonna proceed to the next step. So to iterate a little further, let's say you submit message to SQS using a generated task token, and this SQS triggers a Lambda. This Lambda retrieves the task token and maybe also insert something into the database. And then a human looks into the database and if everything is fine, submits a EKS tasks and that EKS tasks returns the task token with the send task success API. So this is just the API call back to the step function. And note that these are just components, right? Like as, as long as you have this task token, you can use any programming language or any platform to run your code and send it back to step function. Standard step function can run up to a year. So you can also specify 
how long step function should wait before terminating the flow. So you do that by using heartbeat seconds. So in this case, if it doesn't get the task token back within 10 minutes, it is gonna terminate the task with a timeout error. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind, not every service supports all the integration patterns. So in this chart, you can see which service supports request response, run a job or wait for callback. Okay, so we left at wait for callback, which actually is a nice transition to activity workers. So actually from talking to other folks, not many people use these activity workers. So in the step functions on the left, everyone goes to state machine, you create your shiny state machine and do all that stuff. But here is this other options called activities, right? And then you can create activity and use it in step function. So what is it? So remember for a regular callback pattern, the step function is integrated with an AWS service and it is invoking that service, but with activity workers, step function will run an activity with input and task token. So think of it like a task queue. So step function is not going to invoke any AWS service. It is just gonna pass a JSON message to an activity and it is also gonna attach a task token to it. Very, very similar to the callback pattern. So every time you create an activity, it is gonna have a ARN. And another process using this activity ARN can read this activity and see if something is in it. So after the step function submits the message to this activity ARN, another code using the ARN reads this and this code can be written in any language and run in any other services. So this code can run in a Lambda, or EKS, even EC2s or on-prem. And then maybe this code submits something into the database. And then again, our favorite manual approver comes in, checks something and then invokes another code Again, that code can run in any of those platform. I'm just showing you Lambda because I'm a little biased towards Lambda. And then this Lambda can return the output with task token. So maybe this program process the message and then generate some other message with the output and then it returns with the task token and then this state is done and then it goes to the next state. So it is very, very similar to the callback pattern, but the difference is with the callback pattern, the step function is invoking an AWS service from the step function itself. But with activity worker, step function is just invoking the activity and not invoking any specific AWS service. And then any code can read from this activity, process it and send it back. So going back to this chart, I don't know if you guys and girls noticed, this chart also has step functions. Step functions getting integrated with step functions. You can call one step function from another step function using nested workflows. You can reuse common workflows without copy pasting into multiple workflows and standard workflow can call express workflows and vice versa. So let's take a look at this sample uh, check processing workflow. So let's say this step function has a step called process checks and this step can in turn call another step function which calls a lambda, which checks some database, submits AWS batch synchronously. So as soon as the batch is done processing, lambda does some more business logic and send a message to SNS and then sends this back to the parent step function and then this step is done, then this one publishes to another SNS. So this is pretty handy. So how to trigger step functions? So inherently, Amazon API can call step functions directly. Amazon CloudWatch events can call step functions. Uh, so this is super powerful because there are a lot of AWS services that integrates out of the box with CloudWatch events. Uh, let's say for EC2, when EC2 coming up uh, or something changes in the EC2, EC2 going down, they all post CloudWatch events along with bunch of other AWS services and you can invoke step functions in response to all of those. You can even scrape CloudTrail logs 
and generate CloudWatch events, and that can also invoke step functions. Next is Amazon Event Bridge, and then step function API. So basically any code. It could be Lambda, EC2, EKS, and many more. So how do you get started? Actually, the best place to get hands-on is the console itself. Step function has a lot of good templates already given. Uh, so you can see you can do a run a sample project and it has a bunch of examples. You can select any one and then it will give you the code, visual workflow, everything. Uh, or you can start with a template such as hello world, retry feature, wait state, etc. Also another tip, uh, Visual Studio Code has a step function plugin which lets you code the state machine and also preview the visual workflow. This is part of the AWS toolkit. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, please click that like button, smash it if you are into that kind of thing, and subscribe. All right, I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.